Chelsea's 24-25 season is upon us. We've only got a couple of days now until that Man City game at Stamford Bridge on Sunday afternoon. So I wanted to do a Chelsea-specific predictions video mainly to you know look back at this at the end of the season where we two positive negative wildly optimistic really wrong on some predictions so i always uh, find that a bit fun but also to get your views and predictions in the comments below and as well not just the premier league predictions because i've already done a premier league prediction show that you can already go and find it'll be up in the cards where we talk about the the premier league winners who's going to finish second third fourth fifth sixth seventh i think i did the top seven and also relegation and a surprise package team so please go and check that if you want to see more general premier league chat but this is chelsea specific so we're going to go through the competitions where i think chelsea are going to end can they win them also uh, player of the season young player of the season surprise player of the season and there may be some hot takes along the way please hit that like button if you're enjoying the content please let me know your thoughts in the comments below i'm repping a, a bit of blue today with the como shirt I, I tried to get fabregas on the back unfortunately not but i mean this would make a great chelsea shirt by the way as you know i'm very frustrated by chelsea shirt designs but we're wearing blue and the como of Cesc fabregas and, and dennis wise so there is some chelsea influence there uh, but let's jump into it so premier league if you've seen what I've said, not only in the Premier League predictions video, I think I said it on 90 Min 2 when I was on that show a couple of weeks ago. I may even said it on another podcast. I, I believe Chelsea are going to finish fifth. Now, it makes me laugh a little bit because a lot of comments recently on my videos and, and my shows have been, you're too negative, you're always talking Chelsea down. I actually think fifth is not the most negative prediction you could make about Chelsea this season because feasibly based on Chelsea's own influence on this in Europe if English teams do better than they did last term in in Europe Chelsea could finish fifth and get Champions League qualification which is what they need to get this year so um I, I know some people have gone fourth fourth or fifth the fact I'm fifth, I mean, I, I'm not even close to the lowest prediction I've seen for Chelsea, even amongst Chelsea fans. I mean, I, the most pessimistic of Chelsea fans have us mid-table. I do not have us there. Despite my concerns, I my, my general theme about this is that Chelsea have a lot of talented players and maybe based on hope, but also some logic based on what we saw last season is that hopefully having those players fit more often than not will mean Chelsea win more games than not. And also... There is chaos around us. I mean, Manchester United, we know the problems there. Will Aston Villa be as good with Champions League football? Will Liverpool be as good with on a slot? You know, I, I think that there is room for Chelsea to maybe get a little bit better than, than, than last year. But obviously, there's been so much chaos. So I couldn't honestly say fourth or, or above that, to be honest. I think for me, fifth, which to be honest, based on the circumstances, would be deemed an all right season for Chelsea. Moving on to the Europa Conference League, I think this is pretty quick. Chelsea need to win the Europa Conference League. It's not the height of our European achievement. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be classed as one of the great Chelsea victories and silverware, but it would be potentially based on what happens by the time we get, if Chelsea do get to the Europa Conference League final. It could be the chance for this ownership to win their first piece of silverware. And that would still be something to celebrate. Yes, not something the as I said, the greatest achievement we've ever got. But unlike Arsenal fans who I've heard some of them, you know, lecturing us about even caring about the Europa Conference League, win some form of European silverware first and then you can maybe talk to us about European um, heritage and success because Chelsea fans obviously know a lot about European success and to be honest the funny thing about this is if Chelsea win the Europa Conference League we'll be able once again to say we've won it all so it's a great chance to embed some youngsters give fringe players in our massively big and bloated squad some minutes and as well hopefully enjoy some games along the way if Chelsea don't win the Conference League it is going to be an embarrassment due to the fact that we are so heavily seeded in this competition so with the two cup competitions, I kind of bundled them together because this sounds obvious and I guess you could make the same argument about the Conference League. Obviously, that's a new format from UEFA, but you really are at the mercy of draws. I mean, a couple of seasons ago, Chelsea got Man City away in both the third rounds of the Carabao Cup and also the FA Cup. And I know we were terrible that season and we lost both quite easily, but again, you are at the mercy of draws. So it, Chelsea have been quite lucky, especially in certain competitions in recent years. I, I think we were helped by the draw in the Carabao Cup massively. We were helped by the draw all the way up to the semi-final in the FA Cup. So, you know, if, if you do get a decent draw, maybe you go a long way. But I 
I'm going to put some form of Wembley success. I'm going to go for a Carabao Cup here because Chelsea have to end their Wembley curse sooner rather than later. And what a chance and what an achievement it would be for Enzo Maresca to be the coach, probably the most unlikely coach in recent times to do it, given that Tuchel's tried and failed. Mauricio Pochettino has tried and failed. So, you know, I think for Chelsea, they need to go to Wembley and make that a winning place again. And hopefully... If there's enough rotation, Chelsea, again, usually do well in one or two of the Cups. And we've probably got enough talent there to, to get far in the competition. And maybe, just maybe, this year, I say, I, I'll go for the League Cup. It will be the first trophy of the year in kind of redeeming that pain of last season or the FA Cup. But I, I think Chelsea can win one of these, absolutely. So let's go for the League Cup. So now we get into player-specific predictions. Player of the year. The funny thing about this is, of course, Chelsea's standout player, our rock star, our superstar, Cole Palmer, wasn't signed at this time last year. So if I was making this show 12 months ago, I would have not predicted Cole Palmer because he wasn't a Chelsea player yet. And that's what's quite funny is that Chelsea could still sign Joao Felix. They could still sign Victor Osman. Victor Osman could turn out to be Chelsea's player of the season because he comes in and, like Palmer, scores a bundle of goals and wins that competition. However... I'm going to go for the safe bet here. And I think the safe bet for, for Chelsea player of the season is Cole Palmer. Um, just because of what he did last season, the influence he has. Um, and I just think the overwhelming talent. I think his ability for an England team that weren't amazing and the fact that he was kind of a fringe player for most of that tournament. He came on, he play, plays the pass that Ollie Watkins scores to get England to the final. He comes off the bench in a really bad performance and gives England some hope. And that was just more evidence for me of the genius and brilliance that is Cole Palmer. And I feel like he's just a player that naturally is effective, naturally is impactful, makes big things happen on a number of occasions. And even with maybe the limitations of what Moreska's system brings, you know, some concern over maybe some players not uh, being as free as Cole Palmer but I, I just think Palmer's too good and I think he will find himself on a regular occasion being Chelsea's most productive player um, I think Nkunku's probably a close second here if he stays fit I think he'll have a good season for Chelsea but let's go for Cole Palmer two years in a row young player of the year there are a number of contenders for this because of course Chelsea have bought a lot of young players but I'm hopeful that he isn't loaned out and Tyreek George, despite not playing a lot in preseason, when I think a lot of us hoped he would. And yes, Chelsea have bought a lot of wide players and we do now have Pedro Neto on the books. I, I just hope that Tyreek George stays around and gets minutes in the Europa Conference League. Um, I, I think that it'd be nice to see him given those minutes and hopefully he can impress. Now, I think other options for this is obviously Mark Guillou. If he was to stick around, I, I think Mark Guillou could turn out to be Young Player of the Year given... He is still fresh. He is still raw and um, has impressed during preseason. Absolutely. And, and maybe could make the conference league his tournament as well. I just I feel that other players it's, for me, it's difficult because I kind of judge young player of the year a lot more harshly in the sense that it, it's looking at players who aren't really established. Yes, in age, we have some players in our squad who I guess technically qualify for what you would deem young player of the year. But for me, I you know, Cole Palmer can't be young player of the year again. He's already done it and he's now a more experienced Premier League player. I can't really classify Moises Caicedo in that boat. Even Levi Colwell, you know, an established, you know, he's becoming an established Chelsea player. So for me, I, I, I'm a lot more harsh in, in this kind of category. I think you have to be a player that has not got a lot of first team minutes who's going to kind of come in, break through like Alfie Gilchrist last year. Great example. Uh, so I think Tyreek George for me would be an exciting one to look out for. Surprise player of the season. Um, I feel like a lot of the players I'd be looking at for positives this year are players that I've already kind of praised and already feel they're, they're good players or impactful players or players that could go to another level. I'm going to pick a player that I don't think will always be a first teamer. I don't even think when we get to the end of the season, maybe we'll be deemed the biggest and most important player for Chelsea. Let's hope there's more than a couple because that will mean it will be a good season. But maybe a player in terms of that Swiss army knife that apparently Maresca wants and that player that I think over the course of a grueling season will prove quite a good utility player. And that is Renato Vega, who obviously we signed from Basel earlier this summer. I feel for the price, it was I think it was under 20 million. And he's got a good build about him. I think he's got nice versatility. He could probably play left centre back, left wing back, maybe even in central midfield. And I think we'll just be one of those kind of steady players that will put in 
competent maybe displays gets better over the course of the season a little bit like how Malo Gusto I think quickly impressed and maybe at times was not given the credit he deserved and eventually was and eventually has come through as a player that a lot of people now deem a good Chelsea player and reliable Chelsea player uh, but I feel like Vega will turn out to be one of the shrewdest pieces of business Chelsea do over the summer I can't really say Pedro Neto is the surprise of the season because if he plays like he did at Wolves and, you know, if he stays fit, maybe that's the surprise. But people know who Pedro Neto is. Maybe you could argue Kin and Drewsbury Hall in the sense that he's a lot better than people anticipate, in the sense that he really does elevate Maresca's game at Chelsea. Uh, but for me, I, I, I go with Vega purely because I think he'll get quite a few minutes and I feel like will be a useful tool for Chelsea. And probably because of his demeanor and if he's you know he's really backing himself he may also become a bit of a fan favorite so those are my thoughts i think that the hot take i could go is that chelsea signed victor osserman and he scores like 20 goals this season and he does become the star maybe drow felix proves me and many others wrong and, and comes in and, and, and also turns out to be chelsea's best player so th those are kind of the, the hottest takes I, I don't think people will like one of my other hot takes which is uh, not going to also please those at Como um, in a sense that Cesc Fabregas, if Chelsea go, it, if it really goes badly for Chelsea, I wonder if Cesc Fabregas could make a return to Stamford Bridge as an interim. We'll, we maybe do Robbie Di Matteo style, um, but let's hope it doesn't come to that because that will mean that Chelsea haven't started the season well. I think that for Maresca, a fifth place finish, if he can win tr two trophies, Again, I know people scream standards, but in, in the current mode of Chelsea, in the current era of Chelsea, that would be deemed quite a successful season and quite a positive season that would be very hard to argue against. Uh, and, and the feeling that we have moved in some form of positive direction and maybe that fifth place does get you Champions League football. Cole Palmer still flying, Tyreek George breaks through and uh, Renato Vega, like with other signings, proved to be a positive. So those are my predictions. Please let me know yours. We are nearly at the beginning, the kickoff of Chelsea's season. So let me know your thoughts. Follow me across the socials at Son of Chelsea and I will see you again very soon. All the best.